8 a.m. as we get you up and get you going here on a Wednesday morning. Bill Gunner, Jen Jensen, it's the early game. And coming up within the next few minutes, our guest will arrive and we'll have a major announcement that we want to get out. And uh, then we will spend the next hour talking about said announcement and what uh, is going on here moving forward. And we look forward to doing that in just a few minutes again, awaiting patiently. Uh, uh, waiting patiently at the arrival of the guest who, from what I am getting instant updates, is on Bull Street. So not far away. Not far away. 803-404-6100 is how you can weigh in. Stay patient with us. This thing is always a work in progress, but we will get that guest in here in just a few minutes. And uh, that person, him, it is a him, I can tell you that, will make an announcement that you will uh, definitely want to hear. So we'll get to that coming up here in just a few minutes. 803-404-6100. Uh, locally, at least for South Carolina last night, uh, the news was the South Carolina's baseball goes down to Charleston and picks up a victory, a much-needed victory, just from the standpoint of being able to continue the momentum. And Mark Kingston brought this up earlier this week when he was on the post-game show. You go back, you get that victory on Sunday over Texas A&M. You salvage at least. You don't get swept. That was the big thing. You did not get swept. And so that was a big deal there for South Carolina. Then you end up also picking up a midweek victory over North Carolina. All right, so you had a nice little run there. You go to Gainesville, Florida, and lo and behold, you pick up a victory there. You, you win two of three down in Gainesville. First time since 2011 that you get two of three in Gainesville win the series. You didn't need to lose the momentum with a midweek loss. Citadel can be pesky. You knew that game meant a lot to them. They were getting it down at Joe Riley Park. Really big contest down there. And South Carolina goes and does what they need to do yesterday. They win 4-3 to three, uh, over the Citadel. Move to 26-11 and 11 on the season. And now you get set for this monster series over at Founders Park starting Friday night. Reminder, we'll have first pitch coming up at 645. Excuse me, pregame at 645, first pitch at seven o'clock and if south carolina they not a must win series mind you but this is one of those series that if south carolina can defend founders park if that home crowd can rise to the occasion founders park becomes one of the tough places to play like it typically has been in the past and you can take two of three then you really like where you stand going into the kentucky series reminder no midweek game next week due to exams so the gamecocks will play this series then you get the whole week off next week before kentucky comes rolling into town kentucky right now up to number three in some of the most recent polls I've seen. So you've got a, a series here with number two, Arkansas. And Arkansas, of course, the only reason they dropped to number one is because they lost two of three last week. And then you get a series with Kentucky. So it's going to be a situation in which you've got extremely difficult series back-to-back, -back, but you have them here at Founders Park. You have them here in Columbia. And so we will uh, we will cover that, of course, immensely for you. And again, last night, Kentucky knocking off Louisville there in a rivalry game, not 17-13. And then also last night, Arkansas with a 9-8 victory over Texas Tech. Uh, the Razorbacks and the Red Raiders will actually play one more today. So I don't know if that matters. I don't know if you kind of catch Arkansas in an odd spot where they're playing a lot of games over the course of several days. But the Razorbacks and the Red Raiders today uh, over in favor will play at 5 p.m. this afternoon. So a two-game set with Texas Tech this week for Arkansas before the big series this coming weekend against South Carolina. Also, just some other games from last night. Clemson knocking off Charlotte 8-5. to five. Three ranked ACC teams went down. Virginia, number 10 Virginia, lost to number 7, excuse me, lost to Old Dominion 7-2-4. Uh, number 8 Florida State lost at home to Mercer 13-6. And number 12 Wake Forest lost to UNC Wilmington 8-5. So a couple games there last night for the ACC that didn't go their way. SEC contest, Tennessee hammered Bellarmine 20 to 5 also one other in-state game last night Coastal Carolina a 5-4 winner up in Chapel Hill over North Carolina so those are just a couple games from last night on D1 baseball there was some NBA basketball last night the NBA playoffs are officially 
underway. You've got the Los Angeles Lakers knocking off the New Orleans Pelicans last night. Lakers now move into the playoffs and be set to take on the Denver Nuggets coming up on uh, uh, coming up later on. 803-404-6100. Our guest has arrived. I see him at the door. Our guest is here, so let's hit a break. Let's hit a break, and we'll come back. We got a huge announcement on the other side of the break. Our guest is here. We will catch up with him. We will let him give you the big announcement when we come back. You're listening to The Early Game. Bill Gunner for the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder with First Palmetto Bank. Jacob Crowder, of course, well, he helped me just a couple years ago. Put me in that great condo. Help me find a great interest rate. Help me find the right mortgage loan. And he can do the exact same for you. You just need to contact him today and get a consultation with him. You don't know what you can do, whether it's buying, whether it's refinancing, maybe even it's building a home. You won't know until you speak with the mortgage guru. Give him a phone call today, 8 Eight zero three seven one nine one zero zero five. Again, that's eight zero three seven one nine one zero zero five. You can email him the letter J Crowder at firstpalmetto dot com. First Palmetto First Palmetto Bank is locally owned and operated right here in the Midlands. Jacob has local decision makers, which means quick and precise underwriting. Find out for yourself. Contact Contact Jacob Crowder, the mortgage guru, today. Eight zero three seven one nine one zero zero five.
And a lot of traffic out on the highways this morning. We want to let you know Bookman Road near Two Notch Road, an accident there. Also Highway 302 at South Lake Drive. I-26 eastbound at Broad River Road. Also Pisgah Church at Rawl. Spears Creek Church Road at Two Notch. And uh, Trotter at Garners Ferry. And still working Watling Road at Highway 1. 86 will be our hard high to 86 will be our high today easy for me to say mostly cloudy conditions a little bit breezy as well sunny and hot tomorrow and a high of 90 88 for Friday with some stray storms possible much of the same for Saturday but it's breezy 62 on the early game Eight twelve on a Wednesday morning. Bill Gunner, Jen Jensen, Preston Thorne having to step out to miss the big announcement. But we have got a very special guest in studio. We have got a huge announcement right now, and I am going to turn the mic over to the special guest. You can pull that to you, sir, and tell everybody who you are and what you want to announce this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Cam Scott here from Lexington, and. I'm proud to announce that I am now a Carolina Gamecock and will be joining the Gamecocks men's basketball team for the next year. I'm uh, very excited. Uh, thank you for having me. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to making big things happen here in the SEC. So, yeah, spurs up. Go Cox. Let's let's talk a little bit about this decision. Uh, now, number one, I want to say how proud of you I am that that you won a state championship for Lexington, <laughs> absolutely for Lexington, and and uh, Coach Pope is here with us. Y'all brought me a hat and brought me a new shirt. You know, the last time Lexington got to get a ring, I, I didn't. I only played two minutes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I was into the very end of the game, but but I, I want to tell you that. And I'm also proud of you because I I and what I've done in my life has come up doing. Uh, scouting and watching guys i love the fact that you stayed at lexington you stayed a midlands guy yes, sir. you represented where you grew up and what you did and i think that's really cool to see you do that for our state and then elect to stay home and now play for your home state university for sure i mean i was just a a really big contributing factor you know i grew up pretty much a lot of my teenage years here and my early adulthood soon to be so, you know, just staying home, staying around where I'm from, my family, my friends, uh, people who grew up watching me play basketball pretty much for most of this. Uh, it's just really been an honor. Uh, but being able to be 20 minutes down the road, I mean, it's kind of exciting, you know. Big things going to happen. Mom's cooking, big part of that? Oh, yeah, you know that. What's the best thing she cooks? What will you be going home for? Because I remember I, I came to Carolina. I was 20 minutes down there. I wasn't an athlete, but I remember going home for cooking. What's the thing that, that you'll be popping in on mom and dad for? Um, I definitely got to go with the mac and cheese, okay. uh, specifically the baked mac and cheese. All the other mac and cheeses aren't that good, but the baked one's where it's at. You now, have you talked chicken too? If you hold on, real on the on the on the mac and cheese, have you talked to Coach Paris about this? No, not yet. You know, he has a he. We had him in studio. One of the things we talked about was indeed his mac and cheese. He says that's his specialty. Oh, I'll have to. Try He's that. got a specialty mac and cheese. I'll be the judge of that one. That's, that's my <laughs> cup of tea right there. <laughs> Got to see what that's looking like. And then you said the baked chicken. Yeah, that's preferably baked chicken. You know, that's, that's my go-to, honestly. 803-404-6100. Cam Scott is in studio. We've gotten his announcement. We're going to come back. We're going to discuss this. A lot of stuff I want to discuss with you this hour. Appreciate you coming. He's going to be with us till 9 o'clock. But Cam Scott, officially a University of South Carolina Gamecock. It's the early game.
Bill Gunner for Zero Risk Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. Spring is here. Do you really want to do spring cleaning? There's a lot going on. A spring football game this weekend. It's time to be on the lake. There's so many things. You don't want to be tied up doing spring cleaning. Nope. You need to call Zero Risk Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. Right now, you can take advantage of their April sale. Get three rooms of carpet clean for just $129. All when you mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game. So give him a phone call today, 803-262-4020 or schedule online. ZeroesColumbia.com is the way to do that. Zeroes does not leave behind a sticky, soapy residue. Instead, they make the carpets and the rugs and the towel all look insanely clean. You'll feel comfortable with the kids, the pets, the dogs, even yourself rolling around on the carpets and rugs this coming summer. So call Zeroes today, 803-262-4020 or schedule online. Zeroes, Zeroes spelled backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. And out there on the highways, boy, things did get a little busy. Uh, Let's see. The list goes on. Watling Road at uh, Highway 1. Also Trotter at Garner's Ferry. Spears Creek Church Road at Two Notch Road. Also find a tie-up Pisgah Church Road at Rawl. Longs Pond at I-20. I-20 eastbound at Bush River Road. That would be, of course, Exit 97. Highway 302 at Highway 6. And Bookman near Two Notch Road. Going to be... A little bit breezy today and cloudy, 86 for the high. Sunny and hot tomorrow, 90. Right now it's breezy, 61 on the early game.
821 as we roll along. You want to do that one more time? just in case somebody was in a meeting and didn't get to hear who's in here, who the special guest is, and, and what the big announcement was. My name is Cam Scott, and I am now a South Carolina Gamecock. There you go. So it's official now. Cam Scott joining Lamont Paris and his staff. He will be enrolling. When, when do you enroll? June? July? Have you decided? I believe it's June. Oh, you're going to love if it. I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Good times. Good times. Well, this guy, tell you what. We got a special guest for you. Got a got a special guest for you. Let's get out to the Love Chevy phone line. Somebody who wants to congratulate you. Let's go out to the Love Chevy phone lines. You try my job. Say welcome in. Welcome in. <laughs> yo! <laughs> yo, 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 yo. The big energy Yay! guy. What's up? Rock! What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Congratulations, my guy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Well, hold on. You got to you got to tell everybody who you are. It's yeah. radio. I, I'll let you introduce uh, yourself. Also, what's up, radio? I'm one of the assistant coaches for the women's side, Khadija Sessions. Um, long time trainer um, in the city. Uh, before I got this job this past year, um, and was grateful to be one of Cam's first trainers, mentors. That's my that's my guy. So um, I want everybody in Gamecock country to welcome him in and show him the type of love you guys give to uh, Gamecock uh, players and everybody that wants to come be a Gamecock. I'm just so proud of him. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Now, what is she? I've heard about Khadija as a trainer. I've 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 heard. What was she like as a trainer? If you're not mentally tough enough, you're not gonna make it through. <laughs> How much do you think she helped you early, your early development, your early stages, getting to where you were? Uh, I feel like it it more so helped me later on, um, you know, because at a younger age, you kind of just hear the trainer talking, you're not really picking up what they putting down. So it's kind of like, I wouldn't say it's necessarily in through one ear, out through the other, but it doesn't really settle in until you fully experience it. But, you know, being able to actually go out and experience some of the things that she was talking about, it made a whole lot of sense later on. Was there a day or how many days were there that you left training with Khadijah? Because I've heard, again, a lot about, and you were, you were like, Mom, Dad, man, she's crazy. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we're going back to that. I don't think I ever, like, told them, honestly, but I've definitely thought it multiple times, especially mid-workouts when she'd do some of the things she'd do. I'd just be like, all right, you're doing too much now. <laughs> but all in all, it was definitely worth it. Uh, just going to keep her in touch, keep her intact, you know. She's been a great support uh, person for me, so just keeping her around, it's been great. Yeah, Khadija, uh, knowing, hearing about you, unfortunately, the Midlands lost one of the best trainers they had, but Dawn Gray, uh, snagged one of the best uh, individual workouts, best coaches she could have grabbed, so congratulations to you, and, man, we appreciate you calling in this morning to congratulate this, this guy on a, a phenomenal accomplishment. Uh, no problem, man. I appreciate you guys for having me. Take care. Khadija Sessions, yeah, you... You uh, you you put yourself through a lot of work. Was there a game younger somewhere along the line where you went, man? I can I can be pretty good at this sport. I might I might uh, you personally was there a game that you realized, man? I, I've got some talent here. Uh, I'll say my first game. You know, when I, uh, first game of high school uh, in eighth grade, it's like twenty nineteen, right? Yeah, no. Turn turn hit coach's mic on there, Coach Pope, Coach Elliot Pope in with us this morning we actually got a full crowd in here uh, as well so yeah i think it was his uh game his eighth grade year um technically one of two games in his entire high school career he didn't start at lexington but had to let some of the older guys kind of show that they could do it or not do it and you know i think he went in and about 20 seconds into that ball game versus yeah, lugoff elgin real quick so it was uh, i think his first game in high school he was uh close to 20 and 10, 20 yeah, and 12, something like that. So 30. <laughs> <laughs> we knew pretty early on. We knew pretty early on it was going to be it was going to be a fun ride with this one. Your mom and I well we were talking off air and there was the really neat tweet that uh Christy Morlando, the the mother of PJ Morlando put up the other day. Um for people that don't know, I mean you were you were a three sports star. I've mm -hmm. talked with Coach Bailey Harris. I was telling you all off air uh, about there was a slight battle that had to be had for your services, whether it was on the football field as a wide receiver or, or a basketball star. And your, as your mother was telling me, uh, your last baseball game was in the Dixie Youth World Series where you played with PG, PJ Morlando. How did you end up deciding on basketball? What was that thing that you said, man, I, I love that sport more than the other ones? 
Uh, I definitely just felt like basketball. I just felt like I had a different connection with it, you know. So, you know, just being able to play around, play throughout the whole summer, uh, pretty much my whole life, just I felt like when it really came down to the decision making, it was a no brainer at that point. And I was like, I got to stick with it. When was that? When do you think that was in life? Mm, I'll say around seventh grade, okay. sixth grade. It was when I really decided that basketball was going to be my number one. Again, for those just tuning in that's been wondering, Cam Scott, Lexington High School uh, state champion. Nobody can ever take that away from you. You'll get a ring. I meant really? to bring mine in here. It doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> uh, but uh, you, nobody can ever take that away from you. And I, and I want to go back to this because it's a, it's something that does bother me in high school these days. You stuck with your local program. You didn't – I don't know whether it was you didn't need to feel you proved yourself or whatever. You stayed at Lexington. You stayed with mom and dad. You stayed in your community, and you represented your community. Do you understand how special that is that – you can always go back to that high school and say, I did this, I brought home another state champion? Uh, honestly, I kind of feel it, but I feel like it was more so hearing it from other people that it really settled in, and they really respected my decision on staying, especially with winning a state championship. So, uh, you know, just hearing it from other people, I feel like it meant a lot more than what I really anticipated. So, I mean, it's a, it's a big accomplishment for sure, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I think the other thing that gets lost in it is you've, I will say this for you. I've, I've talked to you once. We talked at an AAU tournament a couple weeks ago. We won't go into that story, but I felt <laughs> awful after I talked to you uh, at that AAU tournament. I, I did tell you about that. Yes, I did. You can. You want to tell that? I don't know if we want to tell that story on air. We'll talk about yeah, it yeah, off yeah, air. Yeah, 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 we'll yeah, talk yeah. about it off air. That was. I felt. I walked out of there feeling awful. We'll just say that. Uh, but the other that's really cool is everybody I've talked to in Lexington about you has had nothing but incredible things to say. You have so many friends. You have so many friends, and you get to experience your senior year with them. I believe, was prom? Was prom this past weekend? Yep. Am right, I right on right that? down here, like, what, five minutes That's away? right, yeah. You were you were at the football stadium. Yes. You got to experience prom with all your friends that you've grown up with. How was that? Uh, it was a really fun experience, you know, just being able to spend the day with them. Uh, it was just, you know... We don't really have those moments like that no sure. more where everybody's around. So just being able to take that time away and, you know, just be able to bond with everybody. You know, one of the, probably one of the last times for a while because, you know, we all got different lives going on. We got different branches we're trying to get out to. So just being able to have that moment and share that with my friends is really special. You're not going to self-plug prom key? I mean, I wasn't going to, but now that you said Oh, he's a humble guy. Oh, he's oh, yeah. Lamont's getting a humble guy. So you were prom king? Yes. Well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let, let's talk about what you saw real quick this year. Um, South Carolina wins 26 games, goes to the NCAA tournament. What did you see from that particular team that, that you really liked, that, that kind of kept you interested? Uh, it was actually kind of similar to what I feel like we faced over at Lexington. I mean, it's definitely not the same as you see in high school basketball, but uh, I feel like as a leader on the team, just talking to the team and being like, all right, we got to sit down and have this conversation. We have one end goal in mind. What are we going to do to get to it? And for just to see the guys buy in, I feel like I saw similarities in South Carolina's men's basketball program. You know, you just saw a bunch of guys that really wanted to work together and, you know, do the best they could, go out there, win the SEC championships, uh, fell short of the regular season championship. But, you know, just – have that one goal in mind, and for everybody to buy in, I feel like it was something special. How do you see yourself fitting in offensively with this team? Uh, I see myself fitting in pretty well. You know, we've got a lot of good pieces around us, uh, a couple returning pieces as well, especially Sam B. You know, he's had, he had a great uh, end of the year, you know, unfortunately starting off the year pretty rough, but the way he finished it was really phenomenal, and I believe just plugging it with him and some of the other guys, it would be real smooth. You, my understanding is you have a good relationship with Gigi, with Gigi Jackson. I understand you know uh, Colin very well, Colin Murray Boyles. Um, how much did their decisions to stay home and, and play for Coach Paris and, and what you've seen, how much did that play on your decision? Uh, I played a good bit, honestly. You know, just um, just watching Gigi come in, do what he did, and then be able to take that to the next level. You know, I got a chance to work out with him a couple months ago. Um, so just being able to talk with him about it, see how he felt, how what the process was like, uh, being here in Columbia, and then 
taking his talents out to Memphis. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of cool just to hear the experience from a firsthand point of view. But for him to be local, uh, pretty much following right behind his footsteps, being in the same school. So, I mean, that's a big part. But, you know, Colin as well, growing up, playing against each other. But, I mean, working out with each other and now being on the same team, and I think it's going to be a real special thing. How much did you lean on Gigi for recruiting advice? Did you ever talk to her? Or was that just something that y'all are just friends and it was different conversations? Or did you ever say, hey, here's what a coach told me. What do you think about this? Uh, it was definitely more of a friendship kind of thing. You know, I let him do his thing because, I mean, once you get here, it's a lot. I mean, I know, especially for him being the number one player in the class, he had a lot of pressure on him. So uh, I just really let him do his thing. You know, whenever he was there to talk, I was there to listen. But uh, we really just kept it friendly. And, you know, he did throw in a couple of recruiting statements telling me, you know, where to go, stay home every once in a while. But we usually just kept it cordial. He's a different player, but at the same time, y'all are both lengthy players. How much do you see your game similar to his? Or, is, or do you see it as a completely different? Uh, I mean, he's definitely developed uh, even since he left here. But, you know, playing against him, especially in the high school uh, uh, years, I mean, you could kind of see a lot of similarities. We both like to play up and down pretty well. We both love to play off energy, both long. So just being able to kind of com- – like use those similarities to plug my game into what Coach Paris has already seen. I think it should really be a breeze, honestly. Cam Scott joining us in the studio again. If you're just tuning in, if you're wondering, you've been a little busy this morning. Uh, Cam is now officially committed to the University of South Carolina. I believe you. you I guess there's still probably. I know how that works with paperwork and getting stuff done. Yeah. You got to uh, officially, I guess, enroll. You're hoping to enroll in June. You get on campus, whether it's June or July, depending on how that works out. Uh, you get on campus, first thing that you know you've got to work on to be ready for September when preseason starts and November when the season starts? you got to get big. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's, Coach, that's, Coach that's, Pope's that's, over here I mean, pinching him. <laughs> you're working on that now, but, you know, just w- once I get down here, just building a relationship with the guys, you know, you want to be able to have that team chemistry going into the first game, uh, even preseason, honestly. So building off that chemistry will take us a long way. How do you view – Coach Paris's offense right now and and how you fit in that. Is it a shooter? Is it a slasher? Is it a kind of a do-it-all guy? Like, you saw what Michi was doing this year. Um, how do you view yourself fitting into that particular offensive role? I feel like his offense allows me to just play the game, honestly, freely. Um, you know, being able to, if teams back up, being able to knock shots down, if they press up too close, being able to get downhill and make a decision. So I feel like just his offense and the way that he's built it, it's allowed guards to really just play their style and really thrive in it. How much did you pay attention to that the last two years to see? Like, I, I'm always intrigued by this, what a recruit, and this is when I would do the scouting, I'd always talk with recruits and see how much you really watched or what you specifically watched to go, oh, I like that. I like how I fit in there. Did you do that specifically with his offense? Uh, I'm more of the guy who really, like, watches the little things, you know, uh, timeouts specifically. Because, I mean, that's when TVs go to camera bre- um, commercial breaks. People go get food. People go t- on their phones and whatnot. And not a lot of people are paying attention. But that's one of the biggest things that I really paid attention to, especially recruitment-wise. Uh, just seeing how a coach interacts with players, how all the rest of the staff interacts with players, and even how the players interact with each other. Uh, just seeing what what the immediate coach does. Does he go over there yell? Does he go over there comfort? Does he go over there criticize? And even if it's constructive criticism, just seeing how the uh, coach presents it and then the players take it upon themselves to go out there and try to not make the mistake again if they made a mistake and keep going if they did something good. So give us a little insight into the personal relationship, the away from the court, the recruiting process and the personal relationship with Coach Paris because obviously some things happened there in this recruitment to get to where we are today. But what has that been like in, in what I would call your friendship with him? Uh, honestly, I just had a deep respect for him. Honestly, probably like the first time we conversated. Uh, he's always been a man of his word, and he's always been keeping good people around him. So just being able to talk to him, you could kind of tell the genuine type friendship that you'd have with somebody uh, off the gate. So just being able to, you know, chop it up with him time after time, being able to just hear him out, just hear his visions, hear what he has planned for the next couple years and what he had planned for me especially, uh, you know, just chopping it up with him. I mean, it's... 
it's never really been nothing crazy, but you know, just it's it's kind of been cool, like kind of like a friendship, honestly. And he's I don't want to say different. I was I was telling you off air when we bring coaches and in, we interview them, we don't I don't really care. They have press conferences. I don't really care yep. to bring them and go who's your starters and who's performing good here and who's pro-. we like to deep dive into who they are and and Coach Paris I think. Uh, showing his personality again i go back to the mac and cheese he also is big on washing his own car now okay are you a are you a your are you a your own car washer or do you hit up that take five just down from uh just down from lexington high school i'd definitely be a, a car wash type guy i don't know if i could wash my own <laughs> I'd probably probably miss a bunch of spots but mom God, dad has he ever washed his own car once i believe actually yes the first day <laughs> One I, got time. It, I would i did wash it the first day yeah, me, me and my little brother, we watched the car together. Dad, Dad's like, I, yeah, I do remember yeah. that now. Yeah, it was a, a special moment. When it only happens once, it sticks out, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's At least I watched the inside, clean the inside, made sure that was good. So give us a little insight into who Cam Scott is. Uh, you're young, you're young guy still. You're developing, but give us a little insight into into the off the court, off the court again, as I mentioned, and and being around Lexington, growing up there. A lot of people I knew knew you, Richard Adams and his son Seth. I would I would talk to them. Uh, Richard would always call in, especially leading up to that Somerville game. By the way, I want to mention this. <laughs> I learned off air. You were originally from Somerville yes. early on in life. Preston Thorne is going to absolutely hate he missed this. <laughs> and I am going to be so happy we took such a great kid, a great family, and a great basketball player away from Somerville and brought them up here to win us a state championship. I mean, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Family decision, business moves. But and all in all, it worked out for the best, honestly. So I think without that move, things probably would have been a lot different. Play it, yeah. Somerville doesn't let basketball players play. But I get the you to, we'd be doing a football recruitment for you right now. We'd be we'd be talking about where you're going to play wide receiver. Good buddy of yours, you played baseball with down there is PJ Morlando. Yes. Talk about that relationship. Uh, honestly, I think that that relationship was honestly an accident. Uh, well, I wouldn't even consider it an accident, but we weren't really planning on being friends like we are today. Uh huh. So you know, just being able to build that relationship over time, you know consistently seeing him on the field why is he so good like that's, that's all i was asking myself but you know being able to go to his house become friends with him all off the field it just turned into something else and then he actually did bring himself out to the basketball court a couple of times too so glad he stuck with baseball though <laughs> glad. yeah i know that feeling sometimes i've seen <laughs> i've seen kids that way I, love PJ. I, I still tell you that one of the greatest football players i ever covered was jadavian Clowney. one of the worst basketball players i ever covered was jadavian Clowney. <laughs> it was one of the wildest situations i'd ever see you think you'd be like oh not even close um you, now you got to do a little recruiting on him because he's going to have some options. He's going to have some decisions he has to make. If you talk to him about uh, y'all hanging out for a year or two up here together. Uh, we haven't discussed it yet because, you know, I didn't want to tell him yet. But now that he knows, we'll definitely have this conversation pretty soon. Um, yeah, but we'll definitely work on the hangouts for sure. That would be a nice little reunion. Cam Scott joining us in studio. He is officially committed to Lamont Paris and the University of South Carolina. I don't. I, I'm 41. I've been here. I've grown up. I've, I've watched a lot of Midlands basketball, and you you follow now in the footsteps of guys like Sandarius Thornwell and a guy like Justin Mackey, Jen. And I believe Justin Mackey has uh, has sent us something here that we want to play. Justin, a local guy from Irmo, was in studio with us not too long ago. Justin Mackey wanted to say something. He was a little. He was on a plane this morning, but here's Justin Mackey talking to uh, Cam Scott. First off, I want to say welcome to Gamecock Nation, Cam. Uh, Gamecock Nation, we're getting a really good one in this kid. Uh, he has a bright future ahead in the Garnet and Black, and I can't wait to watch him play. I've been watching him since he was a sophomore at Lexington, and what he's blossomed into is nothing short of incredible. Uh, winning a state championship, Mr. Basketball, uh, and really just expanding his game since the first time I saw him. I got to officiate him a couple of times and just talk with him. Uh, one of his uh, former assistant coaches, Coach Arasian, was an assistant when I was at Irmo, and uh, Coach Arasian gave me the opportunity to talk to Cam. And the way he listens, the way he leads his teammates uh, on and off the court, he can he can create his own shot, get a shot when he wants to, and I know he'll thrive under Coach Paris and the system that him and his staff have in place. Really looking forward to watching him. And again, Cam, welcome. 
There you go. Turn that back on. Yeah. Do you hear Justin Mack? Yeah. You are a guy again that has garnered a lot of respect. The way you, the way you've handled yourself, the way you carried yourself. We'll continue talking about that when we come back with you, Cam Scott, sure. in studio with us. You're listening to the early game. Bill Gunner from Mid-State Roof. It's going to be a beautiful day today already, a big commitment. So it's a beautiful, bright, shining day. But you know what? This coming summer, you're going to get some of those Columbia thunderstorms that roll through or maybe those beach thunderstorms down in Myrtle Beach. You're going to want to make sure that roof of yours is protecting your house. And the way to do that is through Mid-State Roofing. You need to give them a phone call today. 803-356-1919. If you've got a leak, let Mid-State Roofing take a peek. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they've got a call center that is ready to take your call, whether it is a Mid-State Roofing employee or an on-call technician. Mid-State Roofing is there for you. So don't wait another day. Make sure that roof is protected with a maintenance contract. Give Mid-State Roofing a call today. 803-356-1919. For nearly 30 years, they've been the leader in the roofing and waterproofing industry, and they're ready to help you today 
846 as we wrap it up with uh, Cam Scott here. If you're just tuning in, if you haven't been paying attention this morning, you tell him the news again. I'm now an uh, not all officially. Way, officially yet, but I've now committed to the University of South Carolina men's basketball program. And I know we talked about your development. Uh, uh, Coach Pope over here bodying you up, basically, poking at you, talking about Can't your size. Me. We were kind of talking about it. Your development, you know this is a change. This is a development. Absolutely. It's going to take a, a – a, you're here to develop yourself, however long that may take. Absolutely. I mean, just coming in, being able to have probably one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the country, uh, you know, the best coaching staff in the country, SEC coach of the year, you know, just being able to have these guys for the next couple of years just to help my development, I mean – it's, it's going to be special. You know, I'm really excited for it. Uh, it's one of the biggest things I was looking for uh, when I reopened my recruitment. But I think I found it here, so I'm really excited for it. You got some things going on. You got to head up to, uh, I believe you said at Hampton, Virginia for yeah. an event? Yes. Uh, the Iverson Classic uh, will be May 4th in Hampton. So, yeah, it will be, it'll be a special time uh, being up there. But I'm excited for it. What are you looking forward to about being up there? Uh, really just being able to develop and learn, you know, nice competition. So I'm really excited for that part. But, you know, being around a lot of pros, uh, a lot of NBA vets, mm -hmm. that's something I've really been looking forward to. I uh, peeped into it last year just, just in case I had the opportunity to be invited to the game, and I actually was. So I'm grateful for that. I don't think I, – I'm going to missay this, and I don't mean in a bad way, but you really made a name for yourself at the Pangos camp. This past said, what was that like? Because you were a good player. Everybody was talking about you. You had all the offers. It wasn't a matter of that. But when you went out there, you kind of exploded. And that's where everybody went, oh, he's a dude. He's a dude. I remember getting the reports back and talking to people that were out there. And, and they were sending me constant stuff because, because of where we both live and, and saying, have you seen this dude? Have you seen this guy? And what was that camp like? Because you're out there with the best of the best. And... I, I think there was a couple reports that I believe they have an award similar. I forget if the exact name is Alpha, but you were the top person at the one of the elite camps in the country. Uh, it was really exciting, you know, just growing up, being a basketball guy, you stay, click on YouTube, watching highlights, you see the Pangos jerseys. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was a really special event for me, being able to be invited to that as well. Uh, I feel like I just went out there and just played my heart out, honestly. Uh, you know, I had a couple of guys that I talked to uh, off the court um, that were a little higher up in the basketball world mm -hmm. that, you know, just keep telling me, keep going, you're looking great, keep going, you're doing good, keep going. So, you know, just keeping those guys in the back of my mind at all times now. I mean, seeing them around uh, every, every here and there, just seeing their faces, just knowing they're watching, and I just got to get better. Speaking of guys a little bit higher ranked than you, when did you first beat Dad and pick up outside? Dang, I, I can't even tell you. <laughs> TVs might have been black and white back then. But it's been a minute since he beat. Did he? Me. Did he not? Uh, did he not challenge you much? No, nah, he know better now. <laughs> have you dunked on Dad? No, nah, he he's, he doesn't go for I, that. I don't blame him for not doing that. <laughs> uh, better be happy I'm driving. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I need a hotel tonight. Let, <laughs> let's let Coach Pope get in here for a second uh, as he's been with you these last five years and, and really developed you. Coach, uh, for those listening, what is what is South Carolina getting from an on-the-court and off-the-court uh, experience here? I mean, he, he's a class act. Mom and dad are great people. Um, you know, it's been a tremendous opportunity over the past five years to grow from a 13-year-old kid. You know, I, I'll never forget he's playing in the district middle school football championship game and uh, you know, I brought mom and dad in and just explained to them, you know, the situation. Here's where we're going to put state championship trophy. Here's where we're going to put his, you know, uh, retire his number. As far as I'm concerned, nobody will wear 23 at Lexington uh, ever again. And then, you know, here's where we're going to put all his different accolades. And they're looking at me like I'm insane, uh, you know, because I was a 26-year-old a kid who had just got the job, been there for less than three months, and I understood the, the talent and the ability this young man had. But to his credit, to mom and dad's credit, to all the people that have been involved and, you know, obviously Cam for putting in the work to take expectation and act on it and improve it over, you know, not just a short time frame, like you mentioned, of being here for a year or two, but doing it over half a decade. Um, that's something that doesn't happen a lot. That's something that doesn't come around a lot. And now with, with, with staying 
um, you know, within the state, staying with USC, um, and, you know, Coach Paris having this string of getting the number one players all the way back, you know, GG, CMB, Cam, and then Hayden next year, uh, you know, it's something special that Coach Paris is doing and his staff has put together there over the past, you know, few years in recruiting. I forgot about Hayden. Yeah. yeah. yeah I forgot about it. Real quick, you got a scouting report on, on Hayden because not a lot of people know much about him, uh, kind of a smaller school. Uh, yeah, Hayden uh, goes to Powdersville, I believe. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, he just won a state championship as well. Yep. So, yeah, he's a bigger body for sure, real athletic, physical type wing. It's, it's a guy to look forward to being able to be up here. You mentioned winning a state championship. Uh, Coach Pope brought up, and we were kind of trying to rack our brain. I'm sure some other uh, local people out there who who followed uh, high school basketball very closely, prep basketball, we believe – Coach Pope believes, and I, I think I agree with him, you were the first ever two-time Gatorade player of the state to go to the university. Is that right, Coach? Am I, I mean, you and I were racking our brain trying to do that. I think the guys I played with, Ro Howe, I believe he was beaten out by Ed Scott in 99, right. and then Ro won in 2000. I don't, you mentioned Stanley Roberts yep. back in the 80s, but he went to LSU. Right. Not sure on BJ, BJ from Irmo there, um, if he was a two-time I know he won it once. I can't, and the, the names escape me, but, uh, you know, we were think, probably fortunate Cam's junior year when uh, Gigi Jackson classed up and came to Carolina. So that, that opened up the path for Gatorade his junior year and then this past season. But, um, you know, I think Jamie Shaw at On Three put it out the, the list the other day. Um, but he's for sure, uh, you know, um, uh, one of those special talents within the state. And, we're, you know, just super excited for Coach Paris and, you know, uh, the other coaches on staff and everybody involved that he's going to be a Gamecock. Obviously, a, a huge day for you and the family as we kind of wrap things up. Uh, now you get to kind of you, you mentioned prom king, by the way. <laughs> Let's make sure we highlight that. You see this guy wandering around Lex, and you top can, of the resume. Hi, yeah, high five him on uh, state championship. High five him on Gatorade Player of the Year. High five him on commitment to South Carolina, and high five him on uh, uh, prom king. But as you wrap things up now, your next month and a half. You mentioned you're going to Hampton for the Iverson Classic. Uh, you take time real quick to to be a high school senior. Just enjoy life. You got everything out of the way. Nah, got to be in the gym at all times. Uh, that's, I mean, it's really been pushed into me now. Mm -hmm. and I feel like it's kind of when I'm not in the gym, I get kind of bored, kind of lost in the world. So I might sleep all day, but no, I just like being in the gym. Just like being in the yeah. gym. The three point shot is what everybody's going to want to know about for you. That that's the biggest thing that I understand. You've got to work on. How many threes do you put up a day? If you if a younger kid is listening right now and you're giving out advice, what's the three point shot? How you got to work on that? Um, well, first off, you definitely got to start with the form shots. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like Khadijah was a lot part of this. You know, she taught me early how to really keep the form intact, especially Coach Pope too. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, apparently he was a good shooter back in the day, so he he, he did some right okay. things. Uh, it's amazing <laughs> when we get older what we look like and what you think about how we. I know you're looking at me like nah, but. <laughs> You, you get to put that photo. I, I will say real quick, Coach, um, Dustin Curtis was in here with us earlier, yeah. uh, and I understood you had a really good slogan that I really liked where y'all put your hand in the paint yeah, uh, and, and put it and said, let's put our print next to theirs. Yep. And I thought that was really good. Um, but So my picture is there. Yeah, oh, it, is. I, it definitely is. Yeah, I, I don't look sweaty, but uh, <laughs> I, it's because I only played a minute and a half of that game. <laughs> you got the ring, though. That's I got, got the ring. <laughs> Final thoughts from you, buddy. You got about 20 seconds. Uh, I'm just really excited just to be here, honestly. Uh, it's been an honor, uh, definitely a blessing, and thank you to everybody for the support. Cam Scott uh, is committed to the University of South Carolina. We thank Coach Pope. We thank Coach. Uh, we, th we thank Cam. We thank the parents for bringing him in. Y'all have been phenomenal. We look forward to watching you next year. Take care. Thank you.